Yasamati Nandana Braja Baranagara Gokula Ranjana Kahana Yasamati Nandana Rajabhadan Nagara Gokula Hanjana Kahana Yasam Gopi Parandanam Hadam Manara Gopi Parandanam Hadam Manara Kali Adamana Vidha Kali Adamana Vidha Amala Harin Ham Amiya Vidha Hamala Harinam Amiya Vilasaham Vipin Purn Dharan Havinan Gar of Bada Vamsi Vadan Hasu Ahasam Vamsi Vadan Hasu Hey, 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 Bhajajan of Fallen, Sudakulan has on him. And Nanda go and no Raku ha ha Govinda Madhava Navanita Taska Govinda Govinda Madhava Navanita Taska Govinda Sundar and Hey, Sundar and Nanda Gopal. Hey, Goranga. Hey, Jamuna Tata Chara. Gopi Vasano. Jamuna Tata Chara. Gopi Vasano. Rasa Rasika Kripa Mohaiha Rasa Rasika Kripa Mohaiha Hey Sri Aruvala Lava Vindavan and Nata Bhara Sri Aravalava, Vindavan and Nathu Padam Bhakti Vinod Hasraya Sri La Bhakti Vinod Hasraya 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Hey yes Get the holy name Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Hey yes Krishna 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 Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Say hey, the holy name. There's no other way. Hare Rama, Hare. Hey, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama, Rama Hare 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 Krishna. Hey, 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 Panjata. Jai Prabhupada Jai Prabhupada Hey you go Jai 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 Sri Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Shilvopad Ki Jai Anshatatvat Ki Jai Nice Garland Ki Jai Okay, so we're officially beginning the weekend program of Kirtan Mela for the next three days, starting this evening officially, but in order to uh, uh, set the stage for the mood, we are going to speak on the glories of the Holy Name, which are as limited as the Absolute Truth. So there's one really powerful verse, uh, I mean, this is practically one of the po most powerful verses in the, that's been given to us by Srila Prabhupada. And it's from Rupa Goswami's Nectar of Instructions, verse number eight. Mm -hmm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om 
namo bhagavate vasudevaya Tam nama rupa charitani sukirtana no Tam rupa charitani sukirtana no Smityo karmena rasana manasi niyodhya Tistam rajetana nuragi jana nugami Kalam nayadakilam ityupadesha saram Tam nama rupa charitari sikirtananu Smityokramena rasana manasi niyojya Tishtan vrajetana nuragi jananugami Kalam nayad akilam ityupadesha sharam Krishna, <coughs> Nama, <coughs> the holy name, Rupa, form, Charita Adi, character, pastimes, and so on, <coughs> Sukirtana, in discussing or chanting nicely, Anusmrityor, and in remembering, Kramena, gradually, rasana, the tongue, manasi, 
and one's mind, niyojya, engaging, tishtan, residing, raje, in braj, tat, to Lord Krishna, anuragi, attached, jhana, persons, anugami, following, kalam, time, nayet, should utilize, akilam, full, iti, thus, upadesha, of advice or instruction, sharam, the essence. <clears throat> so this verse is really very powerful. <clears throat> it comes in, in in the more of the ecstatic mood of the devotee's expression of devotional service. And Rupa Goswami is giving us <clears throat> this verse. It's one of the concluding verses in this uh, series of verses. <clears throat> the essence of all advice is that one should utilize one's full time, 24 hours a day, in nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's divine name, transcendental form, qualities, and eternal pastimes, thereby gradually engaging one's tongue and mind. In this way, one should ride, reside in Vraj, Koloka Vrindavan Dham, and serve Krishna under the guidance of devotees. One should follow in the footsteps of the Lord's beloved devotees, who are deeply attached to his devotional service. Purport. Since the mind may be one's enemy or one's friend, one should has to train the mind to become his friend. The Krishna conscious movement is specially meant for training the mind to be always engaged in Krishna's business. The mind contains hundreds and thousands of impressions, not only of this life, but also many, many lives of the past. These impressions sometimes come in contact with one another and produce contrary, contradictory pictures. In this way, the mind's function can become dangerous for conditioned souls. Students of psychology are aware of the mind's various psychological changes. In the Bhagavad Gita it says, Yam yam vapi smaram bhavam taktva ante koleram tum tamivaiti konte yasadata bhava bhavitaha. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. Hmm. So what is being said here is that the mind is <clears throat> the, what we say, the con control element that directs us either towards Krishna or away from Krishna. Or actually the mind is the center of all of activities. So how we direct our mind really is where we're conscious or how we develop consciousness in that particular area. So here it's recommended <clears throat> that one should engage the mind 24 hours a day in hearing, chanting, remembering the name, fame, form, quality, pastimes, entourage, dham of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, the mind is not something that we have acquired just in this life. It's been something that's been with us for countless lives. In fact, we take birth according to the mind's state of consciousness at the time of death in our previous life. And according to that, that is accumulation of everything we've done in that life and in past lives. And again, it will happen again in this life. So the mind is not such a simplified entity. It is very, as Prabhupada says, it sometimes produces impressions that are come in contact come in conflict with one another and produce contradictory impressions and desires. You see, sometimes you see a madman, a person is completely crazy. <laughs> and you see it, especially now in Kali Yuga, people are completely mad. Even what goes on as normality is another form of insanity from a civilized point of view. 
But that is the fix of Kali Yuga. But then you actually see people who are really mad, <laughs> who are just speaking all nonsense, acting completely crazy, and don't know who they are or why they exist. And it's becoming more so. In fact, the World Health Organization, we don't want to give them too much credit, but <laughs> they keep a lot of statistics and most people will be suffering from mental impression in the world. And even now, the percentage of disease in the world is the highest in mental depression, mental anxiety, mental disease, because the mind is an organ also, and so it gets sick. <laughs> and so the one way to keep the mind from being, being your enemy, as it says here, it could be the friend or the enemy, is to direct the mind always towards Krishna. <laughs> In order to do that, one has to be has to have some understanding that that is the, my benefit in life, and so that comes by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and engaging in devotional service. Then we start to understand that our real benefit is to become Krishna conscious. Not a real benefit; we might say the only benefit. Everything else may look like a benefit, but but actually, it's just less than what we actually aspire in life for complete happiness and complete knowledge. And that only comes when we direct our attention in towards Krishna and devotional service. And here, Reverend recommends to hear and chant the glories of the Lord continuously for 24 hours a day. Now you might say, well, how is that possible? But if you do it all day, you will also learn how to do it throughout the night also. If you start in the morning and just continue, then it will create an impression in, in your mind. And that impression is not like the impressions we acquire in the external energy, which comes and goes by its flickering nature. It's something that develops and builds, and then it becomes stronger and stronger. And then one can not even try to forget Krishna. It's, it doesn't become possible. It's not possible to forget Krishna. Even Prabhupada said, even if I tried, I couldn't forget Krishna. It's not possible. <laughs> the mind is so fixed on the lotus feet of the Lord that it's, that's everything. And here, so it goes on to say, at the time of death, the mind and the intelligence of the living entity create the subtle form of a certain type of body for the next life. If the mind suddenly thinks of something not very congenial or what we say, beneficial to our good, our, our development, one has to take a corresponding birth in the next life. Corresponding means according to that consciousness. On the other hand, if one thinks of Krishna at the time of death, he can be transferred to the spiritual world, Goloka Vindavan. So you might think, well, I'll just think of Krishna at the time of death. But it's not always so easy. <laughs> Because what we do throughout life builds a certain consciousness and a certain desire based on that consciousness. And that will be the impelling force or the driving force which will uh, be there at the time of death. So the more we, we think of Krishna, chant Krishna's name, engage in devotional service, we're actually awakening our next life, which means we're going back home, back to Godhead. So we're actually creating the spiritual conscious, even we are now, when we're hearing, chanting, remembering, serving, and engaging in various types of activity, worshiping. All of these things help build that consciousness. Now sometimes the mind becomes absent even when we do these things. We might be doing some chanting or worshiping, but we're thinking about something other than what we're actually engaged in. And that's the nature of the mind. Chanchala himana krishna prabhati balabhadridha tasyaham nigamanga yevairidam saduskaram. It's flickering. It jumps from here to there. It's hard to keep the mind focused on one particular object or even one particular sound vibration. Usually the mind will stay for about three seconds on something. 
That's how its nature is. It just keeps moving, moving, moving. But there is a way to do that because everything in this material world is of that same nature. But in the spiritual realm, everything is of pure spiritual es essence. So it's not so, so much moving, but it's, it's stable, it's solid, it's fixed, it's, it's stanu. It's, stanu means fixed. Um, and then when we think of Krishna, we can continue to build that consciousness of Krishna where Krishna becomes more of a reality in our consciousness. And then, of course, as we engage in devotional service and purify ourselves through the activities of hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna, then we become fully Krishna conscious. <laughs> and then when the time of death comes, it, it says, it, going back home is as easy as picking a flower in a garden. <laughs> that easy. But if we're not doing that, then it's like trying to push uh, uh, an armored tank. <laughs> so we have to practice, and that's that's what the whole process of Krishna consciousness on the, is here. Yeah, Prabhupada says, ultimately, this process of transmigration. Prabhupada goes on to say, given by Rupa Goswami, he advises devotees to train their minds in order that they be un, that they will be unable to remember anything but Krishna at the time of death. Similarly, the tongue should be trained to speak only of Krishna and to taste only Krishna prasadam. Rupa Goswami advises Tishtan Raja, one should live in Vrindavan or any part of Rajabhumi. Rajabhumi or the land of Vrindavan is supposed to be 84 krosas in area. One krosa equals two square miles. And so that's a, a hundred and... 68 square miles. When one makes Vrindavan his residence, he should take shelter of an advanced devotee there. In this way, one should always think of Krishna and his pastimes. This is further elucidated by Srila Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. A devotee should always reside in the transcendental realm of Raj, always remember and engage in Krishna Smarnam Jana, Kasya Prestam, the remembrance of Krishna and his beloved associates. And so not just Krishna, his cows, his girlfriends, his friends, his, his sakas, uh, his mother and his father, and all of the great devotees who, who have come in the past and have purified themselves. By remembering these, we're actually rem we're putting our consciousness on the pure spiritual platform. By following in the footsteps of such association, such such, and enter into their eternal guidance, one can inquire an intense desire to serve Krishna. So the word intense, we might think, well, how do I achieve that intense desire here? It gives the formula like that. That by serving that realm, which is pure spiritual essence, the realm of uh, chintamani, where everything of is purely spiritual, our consciousness becomes like that. Just like when you get close to a fire, you start to feel warm as you get closer and closer. The closer you become in your Krishna consciousness, the more your consciousness takes on that same quality. Because that is the actual consciousness of the living entity in its pure spiritual nature. We are fully Krishna conscious, but having a material body, living in a material world, performing material activities, and doing this life after life after life, and we've covered that consciousness with another consciousness, which is called the external consciousness, or maya consciousness, ephemeral consciousness, flickering consciousness, illusionary consciousness. These are all of the definitions that are given by that which is not real. Not real means it's temporary, and we are not temporary. We are eternal, and our consciousness is also eternal. So to come back to that pure consciousness, therefore here is the process is given, especially in this entire verse. <laughs> 
Um, here it says, in the transcendental realm, one should serve the Supreme Lord Krishna with a feeling similar to that of his associates. And one should place himself under direct guidance of a particular associate of the Lord and should follow in the footsteps of our spiritual master, but on a certain stage of development, we also put ourselves under the guide of one of Krishna's eternal associates. Worship that person, follow in their footsteps, glorify their persons, hear from them, not imitate them, because that is, a, that is cheap and that is not recommended, but to make that person again a, a part of your consciousness and that person, because they are situated on spontaneous devotional service or pure devotional service, they will help us attain that state. This method, and this is interesting, is applicable both on the stage of sadhana and at the stage of sadhya. Sadhya means God realization. When one is a siddha purush, a spiritually perfect soul. Sounds quite lofty, but this is our nature. It's, it's lofty in one sense. We should always know who we are and where we, what we should achieve. A lot of times we're struggling on the, on the level we are, and we're trying to understand how to deal with these different struggles in the day-to-day -day life. But we should also have a com clear and complete understanding of what is our real identity and what is, our re what is the ultimate goal of life. And keep that focused. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati um, comments on the verse here by Rupa Goswami. Jai Shisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. One who has not yet developed interest in Krishna consciousness should give up all material motives and train his mind by following the progressive regulative principles, namely chanting and remember Krishna and his name, form, qualities, pastimes, and so forth. After developing a taste for such things, because these things are tasty. <laughs> when we have a disease, that disease sometimes is known as jaundice. Jaundice means if you try sugar cane, and sugar cane tastes bitter for a person who is fixed, is afflicted with jaundice. But sugar cane is actually sweet, and it's also the cure for jaundice. So they administer, in a therapeutic way, sugar cane in order to cure the disease of uh, jaundice. In the same way, the chanting, hearing, and remembering of the Lord not be so attractive, but it's the remedy, and it's actually the goal. It's both the sad, sad, sadhana and the sadhya. It's the process, and it's also the goal, as, as is mentioned here by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And then, as he goes on, he says, after developing a taste for such thing, one should try to live in Vrindavan and pass his time remember Krishna's name, fame, form, qualities under direction and protection of an expert devotee. Hmm. The guidance is still there. In substance of all questions regarding the cultivation of devotional service. So now you know, this is the essence. To constantly, or as much as possible, of course we use the word constantly, hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And there's so many glories, and the Lord has so many manifestations of Himself in His different incarnations. Everything is unlimited. So the glories are not limited, his forms are not limited, his names are not limited, his qualities are not limited, his pastimes are not limited. One should develop a taste, and particularly Prabhupada emphasizes Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham, because <laughs> that is following in the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then it goes on. In the neophyte stage, one should always engage in hearing Krishna Kata. This is called... <coughs> Shravana Das, the stage of hearing. Shravana Dasa, Das means service, Dasa means stage. 
who says here, Shravana Dasa, that's what it says. Oh, this, oh, I see, yeah, the emphasis. This is called Shravana Dasa, the stage of hearing. Okay, good. By constantly hearing the transcendental holy name of Krishna and hearing his transcendental form, qualities, and pastimes, one can attain to the stage of accepting, accepting called Varana Dasa. <laughs> Accepting, after hearing, accepting. When one attains this stage, he becomes to he attached to hearing Krishna Kata. Hmm. So then we get eager. We want to hear, just like Maharaj Pariksit. He just wanted to hear for seven days. He didn't want, and he forgot about his bodily functions or needs. He absorbed himself in hearing. So don't think this is beyond your capacity. This is actually the goal of what we're, what is Krishna consciousness here. Hmm. One is able to chant in ecstasy. Mm -hmm. He can attain the stage of smarnavasta, the stage of remembering. Recollection, absorption, meditation, constant remembrance, and trance are the five items of progressive consciousness marnam. So I'll read that again. Starts with remembering, getting absorbed in that remembrance. As the absorption increases, it becomes a meditation. And then when meditation becomes concentrated, it becomes constant. And then one enters into samadhi or trance. That is the five stages of remembering. First, remembrance of Krishna may be interrupted at intervals, so something may come. In. But later, remembrance proceeds uninterrupted. That comes by practice and by following this process as given here. When remembrance is uninterrupted, it becomes concentrated and is called meditation. <laughs> when meditation expands and becomes constant, it is called anusmriti. <laughs> By un 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 uninterrupted and unceasing anusmriti, one enters the stage of samadhi or spiritual trance. After smarna dasa, dasa, or samadhi has fully developed, the soul comes to understand his original constitutional position as eternal servant of I belong to Krishna. Uh, what is it? Radha Krishna Bolo Bolo Kola Betsavai Jeev Krishna Das E Vishvas Kolina Adukanai He Vishvas You belong to Krishna Jeev Krishna Das Vishvas means there is no other connection between you, the soul, other than Krishna. You belong to Krishna. And Bhakti Vinoda, of course, sings that song. <laughs> Hmm. And then, as smarna dasa or samadhi has fully developed, yeah, constitutional position, at that time, one can perfectly and clearly understand his eternal relationship with Krishna. In other words, you have actually come to this level of realizing your siddha deva, or your eternal sarup in the spiritual world. That is called sampati das, the perfection of life. The Chaitanya Charitamrita advises those who are neophytes to give up all kinds of motivated desires and simply engage in regulated devotional service of the Lord according to the directions of the scriptures. In this way, a neophyte can gradually develop attachment for Krishna's name, fame, form, qualities, and so forth. When one has developed such attachment, he can spontaneously serve the lotus feet of Krishna even without following the regulative principles. This stage is called Raga Bhakti. Raga means attachment, strong attachment. Or devotional service in spontaneous love. When something is spontaneous, it's natural. It just flows. Just like a river sometimes just flows continuously in a particular direction with great swiftness. That's the spontaneous movement of that river. And when one attains attraction for Krishna on that level of spontaneity, 
then one is fixed and becomes, uh, there's nothing else but Krishna and one becomes absorbed in Krishna and in the activities and of devotional service. At that stage, the devotee can follow in the footsteps of one of the eternal associates of Krishna and Vrindavan. This is called Raganuga Bhakti. Raganuga Bhakti, or spontaneous devotional service, can be executed in Shantaras when one aspires to be like Krishna's cows, or the stick, or the flute in Krishna's hands, or the flowers around Krishna's neck. These are all living entities. In Dasya Ras, one can follow in the footsteps of servants like Chitraka, Patraka, and Raktaka. In friendship, Sakya Rasa, one can become a friend like Baladev, Sridham, or Sudam. In Vatsalya Ras, characterized by parental affection, one can become like Nanda Maharaj or Yasoda. And in Madhurya Ras, Characterized by conjugal love, one can become like Srimati Radharani or her lady friends such as Lalita or her serving maids Manjaris like Rupa or Rati Manjari. And then the last line, this is the essence of all instructions in the matter of devotional service. So if you want, somebody asks you what is the essence, just show them this verse in purport. <laughs> this is it. So uh, here, so this is the, the ultimate goal of an aspiring devotee who actually wants to go back home, back to Godhead. So following these simple instructions, so where do we start? Becoming more and more uh, active in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So now we have this upcoming festival, and what will we be doing? We'll be chanting the holy name. And someone will say, well, yeah, I have my favorite chanters. I'll come when they are chant. But the holy name is always beneficial. Even if someone is not your favorite, you can still benefit. <laughs> because it's the holy name is there. And when we do that, and you'll see, and many of you have this experience, that when you concentratedly get in hearing and chanting the holy name, your mind becomes full with that. And then even when the day is done, the mind is still echoing the sound vibrations of Krishna's name or something in relationship to the glorification of Krishna. So that's what we want, to come to that stage of purifying our rascal mind, because he's a rascal. <laughs> he's always doing something that is unbeneficial, always trying to take us somewhere else where we really have no business and really no benefit either. <laughs> that's the mind. Chanchala, that's another name for the mind, is running this way and that way. So when we practice and we associate with devotees who are doing the same thing, it becomes a collective concentrated consciousness that develops. And then even if we become a little inattentive during that activity because everyone around us is doing the same thing. We get immediately, we get back to the proper focus of consciousness like that. So please uh, try to attend the, the programs to this weekend. There's devotees are coming from different places to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. It's more than just a fun thing. It is actually in the essence of our spiritual growth and the happiness that we're looking for. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. Any comments or questions, Sabina? Yes. Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Maharaj, for this lecture. Um, in this verse, it is mentioned that um, throughout our spiritual practice, we are developing this focus um, on Krishna, this uh, yoga balena, uh, this strength to achieve uh, destination of Krishna's abode at the time of uh, death. So, um, 
it doesn't seem to me that only focus is required because Kamsa was also very much focused on Krishna, <laughs> but in a much uh, negative way. Um, he got liberation though. Yes. <laughs> so my question to you is, um, is uh, our eternal identity uh, in relationship to Krishna something that we are developing uh, no, throughout the life? It, it's or, you're and it's according no. to our uh, rasa that we're practicing our bhakti in? Or it's just something that we... Uh, gradually just remember as no. we purify our consciousness. No, you don't gradually remember. <laughs> we just... It comes with gradual mm -hmm. development, but that development is the process here. That's what we recommended here in chanting. And concentrating on these, these activities and then developing. The... That identity is fixed, and you have a particular identity. Now, here it says one should take shelter of an associate of Vrindavan and work in... In other words, one should glorify here about that person's qualities and activities and try to serve that person by offering prayers and getting blessings. But at the same time, that person may be not in the same rasa as you are. In other words, you may be in Madhurya Ras and you take shelter of Sakya Ras. But that's okay, because even if you do, that person in Sakya Ras at one point will point you in the direction of where your eternal nature is. In other words, and the point, principle is take shelter of an, of an eternal associate of Krishna in Vrindavan. And then through that method of service and through hearing and chanting Krishna's glories, we gradually are starting to awaken that internal mood. And even devotees who have been practicing for so many years, they get an indication of what is their internal mood. Uh, we can't guess it. <laughs> it comes by realization through the process and also by the mercy of the one spiritual master. As Prabhupada says, when you're ready, the spiritual master will come and reveal it to you. So that's the process like that. So if you just follow it. The process is quite easy, but it requires a determination and attention. And that means to keep our mind fixed. And now, so the whole process is here, as mentioned here, is g uh, directing the mind in the right way. That's all. And everybody's mind it, it works slightly different, but the mind works basically in the principle of always looking for some enjoyment. <laughs> The mind is in the mode of goodness in its pure state, and so it's easily led away by things around it. And it's always looking for enjoyment. The, 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 the intelligence is in the mode of passion. And the intelligence has more of a discriminating factor, where the mind is more or less just moving along according to the sense objects. So one has to sharpen their intelligence through uh, hearing, about philosophical teachings that help us to control our mind and senses and bring them under the, the, the control of higher authority. Like that. That's called Shastra Chakshus, seeing through the eyes of knowledge. Like that. And that is the intelligence is now becoming strong and that will help to focus the mind. Otherwise the mind will lead you anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> You'll be sitting and all of a sudden you're in, um, you know, Mexico <laughs> or some other place, you know. You know, all of a sudden, you, your mind can take you anywhere and anywhere to anything. In some of the worst places and some of the best places, both materially. So, therefore, one should learn how to Keep the mind moving towards Krishna. 
like that. And as the mind becomes fixed on Krishna, it becomes more attracted to Krishna. And it becomes more natural and easy to move that mind in, in towards Krishna because it's it's moving already by its own volition, by its own force. And when your eagerness, when you develop this eagerness to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, then you know you're making advancement. If you're not eager to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, that means you have a way to go yet. <laughs> Okay. Yes, Adi Prabhu. It's kind of <laughs> exciting and important uh, discussion. Thank you for starting it's with this pretty verse. Pretty powerful verse. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very, Very powerful. I, I took a chance and just went went for it. You know? <laughs> Thank you. It's, it takes courage, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> takes courage, I guess, to start with this verse. Yeah. Um, I have a question about this verse. Um, this is probably a question that's asked many times. Uh, one of the parts of this um, essence of all advice is to use uh, all the time, kalam akilam, or 24, 24 hours a day. You touched upon this. Uh, but um, um, the question is about some people who have outside jobs in, in some what we call, uh, how do we call, we used to call this karmi job, or with karmi, the karmis. Right. Mm -hmm. Meaning with, with those who do not practice spiritual life. Yeah, that means they're getting karma. That's what karmi means, they're producing yeah. karma. <laughs> yes. But one, once a friend of mine uh, chastised me saying, how do you know they're karmis? Maybe some of them are jnanis. <laughs> <laughs> but, meaning that in some, at some office or factory or something, then how can one uh, stay Krishna conscious at such a job? Because we want to present Krishna consciousness as a method even for people, I mean for everybody. Mm. And uh, not just offering something once a month as a donation or something, but something during their work or our work, how can we uh, remain well, Krishna Well, you know, I could answer that in so many different ways. We could, you know, say, well, you know, do your best. <laughs> And figure it out, you know. But ultimately, get out of that. <laughs> and just associate with devotees. That's the that's the that's the only solution. Because as long as you're in that material energy, you're going to have to play by certain rules that are contrary to developing your Krishna consciousness. So yeah, that's one way to answer it. <laughs> you know, I mean, one should just think. Oh, Oh God, here I got to go to that horrible job with those horrible people in that horrible atmosphere. And I'd rather be here just, you know, listening to Prabhupada or, you know, taking some nice prasadam. <laughs> so, you know, we generally, we have to generally pull back from that eventually. We can't just continue on like that. Because um, Prabhupada wanted us to create a society within the society, which was not at all dependent on the external society. For anything, mm -hmm. for our maintenance, for our livelihood, for anything. But while you're in it, it's like, you know, make the best use of what you got, try to become Krishna consciousness as much as possible. And there's one devotee, his name is Ramaniya. He's probably a disciple from Alachua. He worked for 28 years at a job. And somehow or other, you know, he, he, he was able to maintain his, a certain level of Krishna consciousness. Because he, he used his intelligence how to, how to keep himself focused at the same time. Uh, and he wrote. And he also speaks about it. He gives lectures on it, and he, he also wrote about it. So uh, there are persons who really study the dynamics of the external energy and see how they can somehow or other still associate, but in a less way. And of course, it may differ from situation to situation. Depends on what kind of external 
and you know employment you have. So sometimes we say try to get something that's a little bit sattvic, so you don't have to, you know, go down to the rajasic and tamasic moods of of activity. You know, and just maybe get a get a little vegetable stand on the side of the road or something. <laughs> <laughs> Grow your own vegetables and sell, sell those or something. <laughs> or work for the farmer's market or something. <laughs> yeah, so there's some, you know. But mm, I just think gradually one should think how to pull back from that. And at least this is a little bit... And something different, but society is helping us today. <laughs> the whole society is falling apart now. I don't know if you see it's 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 in a, sort of getting into a critical state of collapse now, and it's going to continue throughout this year, and then really hit hard at the end of the year. So yeah, and that's this is on the world level. So we'll be forced to somehow or other get kicked out of our comfort zones in the material level. <laughs> the money won't be there, or all the facilities that the material society provides won't be there. So that's coming, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. So well, why don't why do we plan to, uh, you know, move away from that? And the best way to move away from it, as Prabhupada said, Every temple should have an active farm community where we have cows, agriculture, and various activities centered around farm life, which is great for grihastas like that. And that was Prabhupada's determined statement, build these farms and these, you know, you won't be able to go to work anymore. <laughs> You're going to have to develop your own life. And that's, I mean, I, and I just published, I just finished a book based on this whole thing. The book should be out in a couple months, maybe. So I've been studying it, and what Prabhupada is saying is actually coming true on the social level. And this is the, the future of our movement, and it's not the future anymore, it's the present. So why keep working for the non-devotees and get paid some piece of paper which has no value. That's all it is. It looks nice, different colors. And if the government collapse, you, you use your paper for, you know, stuffing your pillow at night. So. Prabhupada gives a whole long lecture about finance and money. He says, they cheat you. You work so hard and you get a piece of paper and it's useless. It's useful because the government says it. Different. It's not really wealth. Wealth is land. Wealth is precious metals. Wealth is livestock if you have animals. This is, these are equities that give foundations to life and ha are stable. <clears throat> not this paper stuff. <laughs> And just like now, inflation's hitting so high that what was what the, the value of a particular currency is now dropping. So you work so hard, you get paid that much, and now it's the value is even less. It's just going down like that. So anyway, so I don't rec really recommend people to try to find the best way to live out there. <laughs> We might have said that about 10 years ago, but right now I think it's a different situation. I don't know if that answers your question. It doesn't, <laughs> but <laughs> it's basically how, what my experiences are right now that we start, start really seriously moving towards a more self-sufficient society. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, that's. We've all been autistic, but now we're starting to straighten out. <laughs> we're putting it in the right order now. Krishna first. <laughs> yeah, and that's a nice example. It's a very wonderful story, and, it's, and devotees can help others. That's why when we go out on Hari Nam, even if there's nobody out there, Prabhupada said. You know, the, the, the insects will hear, the trees will hear, the non-moving living entities will hear. So, you know, spreading the holy name is always beneficial. Okay, anything else? Yes, Marco? Don't go away because I have some Mahaprasadam at the end here, so... <laughs> Just in case you want to decide to pull out before the class ends. <laughs> mm. So Maharaja, I mean, I have I have a lot of questions in my mind because Prabhupada speaks about that in the next life we go to the universe when Krishna's pastimes are going on. So I'm just I'm just curious, what's the qualification? to go to these pastimes, so, or, or are these pastimes also for us to minimize our material desires, or, I mean, because if, if we have to meditate even in this life for, you know, uh, that this verse says uh, on this Raganuga platform, so what's the, what's the, what's the significance of this? Uh, oh, I mean, that's, a, that's success. Prabhupada generally says, in, Prabhupada says that generally it takes Two births from the time you begin your practice of Krishna consciousness to go back home. Usually, he says it's two. But some, but he said you can make it in one life. You can, but he says generally it takes two. So that second birth is that you get to associate with Krishna on the, on, on the planet where he's performing his pastimes. So when Krishna was here five thousand years ago, there were people who were got the chance to associate with him. So, now we're associating with him through his name and through his transcendental form. So the benefit is, it's an elevation towards a higher state of consciousness and it's one of the forms of liberation, it's called salokya, to be on the same planet with Krishna, where he performs his pastimes in this world. It sounds like more easy for, for me. <laughs> sounds like what? It sounds like more easy, you know, two, two lifetimes. If somebody say, okay, you will be hit for two lifetimes, I would, you know, just... You don't know if this, you don't <laughs> know if this one is your second or your first, so, <laughs> so you can't really tell. So in other words, try to make it in this one. <laughs> don't think there's another one coming and therefore I can, you know, it's the latter process. <laughs> Prabhupada said there's two ways to go to the top. You can go step by step or you can take the lift. <laughs> so both ways will get you to the top, but one is easy and the other one is arduous. <laughs> take the easy process. That's, you know, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Okay. okay. Anything else? Okay, so we can stop here. So, uh, yeah, so tonight, I think, I don't know what time it starts, five o'clock, I think, yeah, five o'clock. 
and uh, be ready, <laughs> be eager to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Well, we, we can do it anywhere, but when we do it together, it's much more wonderful, fun. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai.